Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this video series from. It's me again, Peter. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do really appreciate you that you are coming back to learn one or two things. That is the idea. The more we practice, the more consistent we are. We're going to learn more and we're going to make more money. <laughs> All right. In my last video, uh, we're talking about the IPOV and VMware Workstation Pro, how you can use that on your local machine to virtualize your environment. Today, I'm going to show us how we can use a cloud PC in doing that also in Microsoft Azure. If you have a Microsoft Azure subscription, it's very good. I mean, you can always sign up for the free trial for 30 days, I guess, and you can get some credits so you can use that to create your virtual machine. But you can also use Google Cloud or any other cloud service provider that give you the opportunity to create a Windows Server or Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine. So let's get started. Why am I choosing Cloud PC? Well, I think it's very fast. <laughs> I think I can scale up and scale down if I don't need it. I can actually increase the memory on the fly if I want. Or if I decided not to need it anymore, I can scratch it out. So if you get your hands on Microsoft Azure, all you have to do is go to the, either you go to the dashboard this way, I have some server running, or you can go ahead and click on virtual machine, create one. Obviously it's paid, so you select your subscription and you create a new resource group. In my case, I'm going to do study with Peter Lab RG. Then I'm going to give it a name, started with Peter. I'm going to do the same lab. You can choose the region very close to you, depend on the location where you are. So everything will be left. Then I'm going to go to the image. I'm going to choose the server 2022. I love it so much. I don't know why, but I just prefer to use this. Then he want to look into this because we need a server that actually is capable of doing nested virtualization. Most of the time, all you have to do is go to, to Bing and just type, uh, and just type uh, Azure nested virtualizations VM size. Okay, that's good. So most of the time they're asking us for like a D version or DS version three. So let's go ahead and find it out. So we have the D series right here. So version three and uh, you can look at it. So we have the eight gig of RAM. So let's see what I'm gonna choose today. I think I'm going to go for this one with a 32 gig of memory and eight vCPU. Why, you might ask. Well, don't worry about this price that you look at here. Yeah, you might be worried if you want to turn this server on for 24 hours a day and 30 or 31 days a month. You might be worried about if you're going to be doing like a, maybe two hours per day on your VM. It's okay because at the end of the day, you might end up paying like $1 or $2 just for those period of time. For this, for the sake of this tutorial, I uh, will go ahead and choose this one. Then if I need more, I'll choose more later. So I'll go ahead and put in the SWP lab and I'm going to punch in my password. Let's see if I type that correctly. All right. So 
I want to make sure that I'm able to RDP to this machine. If you have something that you can say for your hash or hybrid benefit, it's okay. You can choose it. So I should detect that other region and size recommended lead to a higher chance of. Okay. Yeah, you can view recommendation or you can just ignore. Well, in my case, this is not a production server. So I decided to stay with the one that I choose. Now let's come to the disk. I think something has actually changed here. It's been a while. You can now choose more than 127 gig, which is the image default. You can choose up to two terabyte right now. But for me, I love to choose the 127 because I prefer to have a dish additional disk on my own server. Why? Because let's say something just wrong with this server. It's very easy for me to detach the additional disk from this uh, virtual machine and add it to another virtual machine that I'm going to use. So I always stay at SSD, to be honest, for a lab environment. I always recommend you to go for HHD. So, but why not? So I'm going to create an additional, additional disk for this. And I'm going to choose a uh, two terabyte. All right. So let's go to next for the networking. Most of the time, I don't normally check or change anything here because this is just a new machine that I'm not planning in the future to have any other virtual machine to join to it. So I'm okay with what I have here. All I have to do is go next. For the management side, I'm not worried about all of this. So I'm going to go next. Most of the time it's recommended to disable this, but hey, what, what happened if I want to troubleshoot this? So I just leave it like that. But in your case, you might want to disable it. So next, next, finish. Now it's telling us that this is what is going to be charged every time you use this machine every hour. For me, the pricing details is actually okay for me. And I'm pretty much satisfied with what I have right here. So I will go ahead and click on create. After doing that, to be honest, you have no idea how fast this deployment is going to be. The least I've actually seen this happening is like 60 seconds just for us to be able to have a very solid machine to to work with. But most of the time it can take like 90 seconds. So let's see. Okay, so why this is going, doing its things, what do we have right here? You see that we have a VNet, we have an IP address we can connect from. We have a network security group, which is part of the networking. We have the additional disk that we have, uh, we have chosen during the deployment. Here we have the network interface for us. Now it's creating the virtual machine itself. Look at that. Everything is done. Wonderful. So. Let's go to the resources right now. So here we can see that we have a public IP address we can connect to. And also we have some details right here, such as the name of the virtual machine, the operating system, the image plan, and a lot of beautiful information there. You might just want to check if you have some time. So with that being said, all we need to do is copy this IP address, go over to your local machine, go to remote desktop connection, paste the IP address there, provide the username just like I'm doing right here, and click on connect. So what we happen is that you need to provide your password. 
if everything goes fine, most of the time I kind of check this uh, box and click on yes. Voila, look at that. So we have a very beautiful machine that we can work with. So this is going to serve as my own local computer right now because from this machine, I can go ahead and reproduce anything that I really wanted to. So before I move into stepping on and making this machine to become a mega super machine, I think uh, what we have done here is that I've shown you the process why uh how to create this machine in microsoft azure the same thing you can do in google cloud or alibaba cloud or any other cloud service provider that provide you the opportunity to create a vm just like maybe windows server 2022 or windows server 2019 or windows server 2016. to be honest you can use windows server 2012 or 2 for this you can also use 2016, you can use 2019, because if you choose those kind of images, you have to check the price that you're going to be paying for that. I'm just comfortable in using Windows Server 2022 than the rest of the Windows Server. So now that you know how to create your cloud PC, in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can do or how we can turn this machine to a mega machine and do a nested virtualization. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate you. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye for now.